Hello, welcome to Factoring and Least Common Multiples. Here we're going to take some numbers and do what you've done with them for many, many years. So if we take like the number 12, there are certain numbers that go into the number 12. And we're going to list out, first of all, the factors of 12. So factors are numbers that go into 12. For example, 1 goes into 12, 2 goes into 12, 3, 4, 5 does not go into 12, but we've got that 1 times 12, and 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. So here are all the factors of it. Not so bad. Let's try another one. Let's do something like um, 48. Let's see if we can get all the factors of 48. Well, 1 certainly goes into it. Does 2 go into 48? It does indeed. Ooh, does 3 go into 48? Might have to think about that one for a little bit. 3 goes into 4. 3 goes into 8. Uh, yeah, it does. It goes in 16 times. We've got to write that up here. So 1 times 48, 2 times 24, 3 times 16. That's good. 4 times 12. Oh, I'm going to run out of room. Uh, 5. Nope. 6 times 8. And there we have listing out the factors of something. Now, what's interesting is that some of these factors are different than others. You'll notice that this guy right here Nothing can go into 3 except 1 and 3, whereas 4 could break down more. These factors that can't go down any further are called prime, meaning primal or the origin of all the other numbers. We'll talk about that a little bit more later, but here let's look at some of the prime ones here. We got a 3 and a 2. Good, let's do one that has a few more. So list out the factors of, say, 35. Think of all the numbers that will go into 35. That's a 1, a 5, a 7, and a 35. 1 times 35 or 5 times 7. And if we look at the prime ones here, we have 5 and we have 7. They're both prime, but 35 is not prime because it can break down more. And here, 1 is not considered a prime number. It's a special number. It is the the like unit, the, the identity of the multiplication, so we don't deal with those at all. So with 5 and 7, those would be the prime ones. So now we're going to look and take into account prime factorization. So instead of just writing down all the factors at all, we're going to take a number such as 24, and we are going to break it down piece at a time into all the prime numbers as far as they'll go. So 24 breaks up into uh, 2 times 12. Then 12 breaks up into 2 times 6. And then 6 breaks up into 2 times 3. And have we got them all? Do they any more break down? Nope. Then all of these guys are now prime, so this is what is called the prime factorization. I'll write it out like this. 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. This right here is the prime factorization, or it's very similar to like a genetic code. Give you kind of an example of what I mean. When uh, biologists find a new species of animal, they kind of poke it, poke it, and prod it, and, and play with it, and push it, and whatever, and finally the poor little thing dies. They then take a scalpel and slice it open to see what it's made of, what it's created from, how many stomachs it has, how many brains, how many uh, neural systems, whatever. And that's what they get really excited about, is seeing what makes animals move. Well, a chemist does a similar process, but he does it in a very different way. He takes a compound, like water, and he breaks it up and get H2O, and we get this, this code, this chemical compound formula, and he's like, wow, this is amazing, two hydrogens and oxygen, we know exactly what this number is going to do. Well, biologists and chemists have their field, mathematicians, we have numbers, and right now we have the number that will we have a way of breaking and slicing up these numbers to see what they're made of. And we get down to these prime numbers, and this number 24 is made up of 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Three twos and a 3. Kind of like water is 2 hydrogens and oxygen. 24 is 3 twos and a 3. And we find that fascinating. Here's another one. Um, let's do a number 
28. 28 is made up of, um, what is that, 4 times 7? You see, 7 won't go down. We're stuck there, but 4 will go down to 2 and 2. So this is 2 times 2 times 7, and that would be the prime factorization of 28. Now, I do want to show you something kind of cool with this. 24, let's say you started out and broke this down in a different way. You're like, hey, I know 24 is like 6 times 4. And then you break this down, you're like 2 times 3, and this one goes down 2 times 2. Notice we still have three twos, like that. And this one breaks down, um, let's say we did it a different way. We knew that 28 was, I don't know, what, 2 times 14. And you break 14 down, 2 times 7. This is a unique genetic code for these numbers. These numbers have a code that works. And I have a colleague that uh, has, has put together a little presentation of how this relates to us spiritually, not just with numbers, but with us individually. Let's take a look at this quote by President Eyring about uniqueness. He says, and I quote, each of you is a unique child of God. God knows you individually. He sends messages of encouragement, correction, and direction fitted to you and to your needs." End quote. This message is powerful. There's over 7 billion people in the world, and it tells us that our Heavenly Father knows us individually, and we have the ability to receive revelation from Him that will help us through hard times and help us get to direct our lives. This is powerful. One additional thing it talks about is unique. We're each unique through our experiences, the talents we have, or even biologically we're different. We have uh, specific genes and unique DNA. No two people are alike. And that's very important. We're going to also apply this idea to numbers. Let's take a look. So now we're going to try and do these uh, least common multiples. Do, let's do one more example and then we'll let you give it a try and you can pause the video on some of these. Let's do a big one. Something like 70. So 70 will break down into Ooh, 7 times 10 maybe? And then 2 times 5? So we would write that 2 times 5 times 7. Now I write this 2 times 5 times 7. You could write them in any order really, but 2 times 5 times 7 is kind of the order you start with the smallest one and go to the biggest. There we go. Now we're going to give you an option to do it. In your notebook, try the following prime factorizations. 56, 120, and 24. Go ahead and pause the video and resume when you are ready. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you just paused the video and tried these out on your own. Let's give it a shot. See how well you did. 7 times 8, 2 times 4, 2 times 2. Now again, you might have done 4 times 14 or any other numbers up here to get this prime factorization, but you should have ended up with 2 times 2 times 2 times 7. Now with 120, Let's break that up into, I don't know, 12 times 10, 2 times 6, 2 times 5, 6 breaks down, 2 times 3, I think the rest of them are done, so we get a 2, 2, 2, times 3, times 5. There we go. And 24 should look like this. I think we just did 24, didn't we? 2 times 12, 2 times 6, 2 times 3, get 2, 2, 2, 3. Good. Let's try and give you three more. 49, 150, and 37. Go ahead and pause the video and resume when you have put these in your book. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you paused the video so we can do these together. Uh, it was a seven times a seven, so you just, that's it, seven times seven. Good, uh, that one, 15 times 10, three times five, 2 times 5, so that's 2 times 3 times 5 times 5. Some of you may have run into exponents before and write this as 7 to the second power and 5 to the second power, that's perfectly fine. 37, uh-oh, nothing goes into that, so yay, 37 is its own prime factorization. Very good. Now, these genetic codes have something that help us to do a particular uh, 
set of exercises or set of Okay, now we're going to go into the second part of it, and this is least common multiples. Let's write out the times tables for a couple of numbers. Here's 6, and here's 8. Just if, you, if you've studied the times tables, you can do this. Oh, 6, yeah, 6, 12, 6 times 3 is 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, 54, 60, and so on. On the 8s, we can do that as well. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48. Um, what's the next one? 56, 64, and so on. Now, I want you to notice a couple of things. As we do these times tables, these right here are called multiples. So here we have all the multiples of 6, or the times tables of 6, and all the multiples of 8. Now notice that there are some that get shared in common. There's some right there that are in both lists. So these guys that I've circled are common multiples. And then what we're trying to find here is the smallest common multiple, where 6 and 8 first meet up with multiples. And so least, least L for least, common meaning shared, and multiples meaning times tables, the least common multiple of 6 and 8 is indeed 24. So here's another couple. Okay, I want you to try these in your notebook. Go ahead and give it a shot. Here's the number 4 and the number 5. Go ahead and list out their multiples and find their least common multiple. Go ahead and pause the video. Resume when you're ready. Welcome back. Let's do it. 4, 8, uh, 12, 16, 20, 24, uh, 28, 32, keep going there, 5, 10, 15, 20, 20, whoa, wait a second, stop, 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 we got it, we got it, right there. That's the first time those two lists meet up. Okay, go ahead and try another one, pause the video when you're ready, 3 and 15. And welcome back, you should have paused the video and tried these, let's try them out, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, oh, wait a minute, we're going to have a 15 right there. Stop. We found it. Now, there are multiples. If we were to go out, we would have a whole bunch of common ones, but the, those are the least common multiples. Now, here's something fascinating. I'm going to write the prime factorization of the number 6. And we're going to tie factoring and least common multiples together. So 6 in its prime factorization is equal to 2 times 3. Now I'm going to write down here the multiples of the number 6, and you're going to see something that's very cool with these genetic codes. 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, uh, 42, and 48, and 54. Okay, that should give us enough to see what's going on. So I'm going to write down the prime factorization of all of these. You can do this uh, by your uh, prime factorization trees. Um, you can ch to check these out, but this is what you'll end up with. That's one we did before. A times 7. This one's going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And this is going to be 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. Now I want to show you something very cool. 6 goes into 12. 6 goes into 12 two times. And you'll notice right here's our 6. There's the genetic code for 6 times 2. Here's the genetic code for 6 times 3. Here's the genetic code for 6 times 4, and there's the genetic code for 4. 6 
times 5, 6 times the other 6, 6 times 7, 6 times 8, 6 times 9, and so on. Every number that 6 goes into has a 2 times 3 in it. That's how you can identify that 6 is a factor of that. So I'm going to write out a big, huge prime factorization. I have no idea what this number is, but if I write this out, 3 times 3 times 3 times 5 times 7 times 11 times 19, yeah, that's a prime number. So all these prime numbers times together, this is a huge number, and I don't even know, but the question is, does 6 go into this number? And I can immediately tell, based on this pattern up here, that 6 does not go into this number, and I need to put, right here, a 6. Right there, 2 times 3. Now, 6 goes into that number. I could ask some other questions, like, does 10 go into this big number? Well, here's a 2 and there's a 5, that means 10 goes into it. I could ask, does 35 go into the number? Yep, right there. 35 is in that number. So this is a fascinating thing, that you can see what goes on in the numbers by their prime factorization. Now I'm going to show you how we're going to write some least common multiples uh, using this principle of seeing their prime factorization. So prime factorization can actually help us on a few of them. So let's do like the least common multiple of like a 10 and a 12. Now we did this earlier and got these both going into 60. That was our least common multiple of 60, that 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 worked, and then 12 went into 60 as well. Now we're going to do it with the prime factorization. So we're going to break these up. This guy is a 2 times a 5, and this guy is a 2 times a 6, 2 times a 3, so this guy is 2 times 2 times 3. This is 2 times 5. Now, this is where you are going to feel like Dr. Frankenstein making a monster. We are going to create a number here that is the smallest possible number that 10 can fit into. So 10, 2 and a 5 have to go into it, and 12, or a 2, 2 and a 3 go into it. So I'm going to write down, if I'm going to have a number down here that 10 goes into, it has to have a 2 and a 5. Now, I look at this number down here, does 12 go into it yet? It does not. I need to add a few things. I need to have, I've got to have at least one more 2, and that'll give me, oh good, now two twos, and a 3 needs to go into it. So this right here is the smallest possible thing that contains both the 10 and the 12. So I'll put a, a red guy on that one as well. So here's 12, and this other one over here is 10. And they both go into it. Now times these out. 3 times 2 times 2 times 5. And let's see what we get. 3 times 2 is 4, times 2 is, uh, 3 times 2 is 6, times 2 is 12, times 5 is 60. Look at how it produced that number. Fascinating. Okay, let's try another one. We're going to try the numbers 14 and 16. Now you could list out all the multiples of 14 and all the multiples of 16 and see where the two cross. And I'm not exactly sure where that is, but we're going to find out where it is by doing the prime factorization. It's incredibly thorough and a little bit tedious, but it will always get you the exact right answer. This is 14. There's a prime factorization of 14, 2 times 7. Let's do this one in the other color. 16 is 2 times 8, 2 times 4, 2 times 2. Oh, so that's got four twos in it. So now we're going to create, down here, we're going to create a number that 14 goes into and 16 goes into. So first of all, we need to make sure it has one of them. So we've got to have at least a 2 times a 7. Let's go ahead and write that over here. 2 times 7. There's our 14 right there. So 14 will go into it. Now, does 16 go into this number? No, it does not. We have to have four twos in order to make this go in. Well, we've already got one, so we can have, if I do that, 16 goes into this number and 14 goes into this number. And let's highlight that a little bit so you can see it. Here is how we know for sure that 14 goes into it. And here 
is how we know for sure that 16 goes into it. And it's okay if they overlap. We just need the smallest number that will allow both of them to fit in. So let's find out what number that is. Um, this is 16 times 7. I think that comes out to be 112. Wow, that's the number that both 14 and 16 will go to, in, and that's the smallest one. Fascinating. Okay, here are some for you to try. Go ahead and write these down in your notebook and pause the video. Okay, welcome back, and let's see if we can find out what the least common multiple of these are. 18 is 2 times 9, 3 times 3, so we get 2 times 3 times 3. 30 is um, 3 times 5, nope, 3 times 10. Thirty is three times ten. Ten is two times five. So I'm going to write that as a two times a three times a five. So let's produce the guy that'll contain both of them. And if we write this one down, two times three times three, we're for sure got an eighteen in there. Now is there anything? We've already got our two. We've already got our three. Ah, we need the five in there. Put that in a different color so you can see what we added. So yeah, 235, that'll make sure 30's in it. And 233, that'll make sure 18's in it. So we have 90. Both 18 and 30 go into the number 90, and that's the smallest times table that both of them will go into. Okay, here's the next couple for your book. 24, 36, pause the video and resume it when you're done. So 24 is 2 times 12. 12 is 2 times 6. 6 is 2 times 3. We have 2, 2, 2, 3. And here we have 6 times 6. That's 2 times 3. 2 times 3. And we get 2, 2, 3, 3. So we've got to take that and that and make sure they both go into our newly created monster. So I'm just going to write this guy down. Got to have a 2, a 2, a 2, a 3 to make sure that that guy's in there. Let me see. We've got to have two 2's. Got them. And we've got to have two 3's. Oh, we're missing one. We're missing one. So let's put another 3 on there. And times that all together. 2 times 2 is 4. Times 2 is 8 times 3 is 24, times 3, uh, that I think comes out to be a 72. So I think we're good.